Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. Let's ask Jeffree Star, see what he thinks. Jeffrey, I have a question. Do you know when your Aunt Angie will be YouTube famous? Do you know? No? Okay. But it's going to be soon, right? Of course it is. She's amazing. Ooh. That's an interesting choice. Do you agree with Jeffrey and Anya? Really? That is also very interesting. Right, as you will no doubt have realised from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read any of it, the description, this is the second instalment of My Lipstick Chooses My Makeup. So, you want to find out exactly which lipstick I've chosen this time and what this looks like in glorious Technicolor then my friend you are in precisely the right place grab a drink grab a snack put your feet up and enjoy my part of the collaboration with the lovely Anya using the Sophia X Colourpop Lippies. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Right, fingers crossed we don't get too much in the way of construction sounds from this side because hopefully I think they're now on the tail end of the work they were having done. Uh, they've been in for over a week, so it's been quite a while since I've been able to film. Um, simply because by the time the evening comes round and the workmen go home, the kids are home from school and playing and laughing and squealing and jumping and and then by the time the kids go out of bed, I've run out of spoons and I just can't record. So hopefully. You shouldn't get too much in the way of construction noise today, but you will have seen from the intro, this is the next instalment of My Lipstick Chooses My Makeup. So, you will have seen in the intro, <laughs> hoping that I remembered to put it in there, if not I'll put it in here, you will have seen in the intro. Jeffree Star, of the canine Jeffree Star, because obviously I'm collabing with Anya. So that was the little clip that she used in the first instalment of our lipstick collab. So I thought, mm, Jeffree Star, which automatically makes you think of the, the non-canine Jeffree Star. Which then makes you think of Patrick Star. Which then makes you think of Patrick Star. Which leads me to Bikini Bottom. So that is the shade of lipstick that I'm going to be using today. There we go. Um, I have grabbed three palettes to produce him. I'm going to use the Violet Voss Fruit Sorbet. For Patrick's pink body, I'm going to use the violets from Juvia's Place for the splodges on his shorts, and I'm using Pinky Rose Bright Lights for that beautiful bright green of his shorts. So there we go. Uh, I do normally try and keep it to just the one palette, but today it just so happened that I needed three. These things happen. Right, this is still a teaching channel. 
My chronic pain and the fact that I want beginners to be able to keep up with me means that I blend at a slower rate than others. There is a speed widget up there. Please feel free to use it if I'm not going quickly enough for you. Right, uh, I'm about to insert the clip about the difference between hooded and deep set eyes. Don't be frightened, but I'm going to be very up close when that happens. And then once I've finished explaining that, I can get into putting some colour on my eyeballs. So, eye definition coming up right now. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome and Pebble primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer, and then I buff it over mm -hmm with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get so what are the workarounds if you have hooded lids get a brush something like this or a pencil brush sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. 
if you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Okay, hello, I am back. Right, I am going to start off, do you know what, I don't think I've even used this palette yet. I swatched it, but I don't think I've actually used it. This is the, I got it in a sale last year in on Beauty Bay. This is the little fun sized, and when they say fun sized, they ain't kidding. That's the size of my hand, look. Yeah. Fruit Sorbet. Which is basically their little, little rainbow palette and obviously I'm going into this shade for Patrick for his skin. Uh, I'm going to use one of these Do Colour. Are you going to focus? There we go. Do Colour brushes that I got from AliExpress. They're okay. Um, they're more expensive than the AliExpress brushes that I link in the Which Brushes Do I Recommend film. Um, I just picked them up because at the time they matched my luminous green nails but now obviously I have the pink nails for Valentine's Day with a heart this side and how good is my nail tech she managed to get Chris and Angie on one nail look at that I don't know if you can actually see that hopefully you can anyway this is a not I'm not starting off with one of my massive blending brushes. I'm starting off with one of my tighter blending brushes because I want to have a little bit more control about how high it spreads. So, um, I don't think these have got any names on the actual shadows. So I'm going in with shadow number seven. And I will have a chat to you a little bit about the lovely Anya. Although I'm pretty sure most of you know her already. So, Anya. I have known her now quite a while. We, um, we've collabed on a number of different occasions. Both individually and as part of a collab and we've had small collabs where it's three of us so me, her and Nona are of course the bitches of Eastwick and she, I and Angelica Lirma are the AAA girls. We've also been involved in much much larger groups uh, for example, Paulina palette collab that we did to celebrate the lovely Paulina Aspion, who is one of the nicest people on YouTube in terms of the bigger um, channels. She's she's not. I mean, there are certain bigger channels. Especially the one that is responsible for Bitches of Eastwick becoming a thing. But uh, are absolute, complete and utter grade A bitches. And they're well up themselves. They tend to forget that they started off small. And they don't want to help smaller channels whatsoever. Because we can't help them grow, so why should they bother? Um, but Anya is absolutely not like that and neither is Paulina. That's why we all got together and did the um, 
the colour before her. But it's just... The smaller beauty community is so much friendlier and supportive than the larger beauty community is. We are what the beauty community started as and what it should still be. Um, I mean, Anya is the queen of collabs. I'm just cleaning this brush off on a clean washcloth. Um, I don't like using colour switches. I find they're far too harsh on the bristles. Especially if you have natural hair brushes. These are synthetic, but... You know. Right, now I'm going to swap into the violets by Juvia's. This was a gift from my friend Kay. Again, these don't have names, so I'm going into shade number six. I will do a full review on this palette, but I just, it was the perfect shade for the spridges on Patrick Schultz. Yeah, Anya is the, um, she's the collab queen. She will collab with, if she likes you, and she likes your channel, and she likes the kind of looks that you are producing, she will collab with you whether you've got three or three million subscribers. And she is so giving of her time and her advice and it's just if everyone were like Anya the world would be a much nicer place it really would so just bringing this right the way down as you can tell I might actually use one of these darker purples just to go through the crease and define it slightly. Haven't decided yet whether I'm going to do that or not. Holding the brush is right at the end as always and obviously circular movements towards the nose in this direction and then away from the nose in this direction because it very gently moves the skin of your eyelid around. So if you do have any looseness there, which I'm 45, nearly 46, I've lost 14 stone, which is around 200 pounds. Um, so the skin on my eyelids moves. And obviously I'm just buffing it into the pink there, just to, to blend where the two shades meet. I like that. Yeah, so this actually, the, the, um, the idea for this collab actually came from Anya because um, I put up on my Insta that I was super excited um, that I'd got three of the Sophia Nygaard collection. I really wanted to get the whole six, I just, I just couldn't afford it. So I got um, the three shades which I'm, because I'm, I always used to be wafty lipstick uh, neutral eyes. I've since gone into wafty eyes and more neutral lipsticks so I thought you know the me of 18 months ago would have chosen Brose the grey and you know Fred the bright red for example um, but the me now knows that I would get more use out of um, <clears throat> Bikini Bottom which I'm using today Mrs. Norris, which I did in part one, and Berry Moon lipsticks, which obviously I am yet to film. Um, so I bought those three and I was super excited when they arrived. I love the Colourpop Lux Lip Formula and I love Sophia Nygaard. She's, she's the sort of girl that I could imagine going to the pub with if we live near each other, you know? And just having a good old chat and putting the world to rights. Not that I drink that much now because I'm always driving because of my back. So I normally I normally start off either with a gin and tonic or a shandy, which is half 
lager half lemonade for those of you wondering. Um, I normally start off with, like I said, either a gin and tonic or a lager shandy as opposed to a bitter shandy and then I go on to either Red Bull or soda and lime or just plain cola depending on what the weather's like. If it's hot I'll go soda and lime because it's so refreshing. Yeah, she's absolutely the sort of girl that I could imagine going to the pub with and having a drink with and putting the world to rights on a, you know, summer's afternoon. I am going to grab a, um, should I grab a different, no, I can probably use this brush actually, it's quite tapered. I'm going to use, I'm going to go into shade three, just to put a deeper colour through the crease. I'm just going to clean this brush off. Um, yeah, so Anya saw my post about that and she's like, oh my god, I've got all six. I'm like, oh, I'm so jealous. So she said, how do you fancy doing a collab with them? I'm like, love it. What have you got in mind? And she had seen a film that someone else had done. I can't remember who now. Not even sure she told me who it was. But she, rem she remembered seeing a film where someone had based their eye look off of their lipstick so she said we could do that and I'm like I absolutely love that idea so that's what we have done so the first instalment is up that went up last week and then you've got this one today and you don't have to wait long because the third instalment is actually tomorrow Shh. Why do I always get emails when I'm filming? So where's the way? Like this is what I was saying about if you've got deep set eyes, just relax and just make sure you brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So I'm just really just putting that through there very, very lightly just to give the eye a little bit of definition before I go in with the bright green. Obviously if you've created your own crease by putting a deeper colour like this from a distance it'll give the impression that you've actually got a crease just here because obviously the deeper colour recedes or goes backwards and lighter colours come forwards and I'm literally just using the very very tips of these bristles you can see to just blend and then a little bit of windscreen wipering just to soften the edges there and make this really soft I like to come up nice and close when I'm doing these so that you can actually see what's going on. It it bugs me when people say, oh, I'll bring you in close and they're still like half a mile away from the damn camera and you think, I'm watching this on my phone. You know? Which I'm pretty sure most people do in the mornings when they're getting ready. They'll pop a YouTube, I mean I do. If I'm not filming when I'm getting ready in the morning, I'll bung a couple of YouTube videos on to listen to or to watch while I'm putting my makeup on. And there's times that I literally think I cannot see what you are doing with that blending. You know, you say you've zoomed in for the eye look and yet I can still see all of your face. I just want to see your eyes right now. Uh, but that's the difference with me. This, I mean, it means that my channel doesn't grow as quickly as most new channels do, because obviously my films are longer than most people's, because I go into more detail with them. But 
tutorials are missing on YouTube. Hardly anybody does them anymore. All the bigger channels are like, oh, nobody wants to watch tutorials. We don't get the numbers on them. And I think, well, mm, I would actually like to watch a tutorial, please. You know, when I was learning how to do this, it was so difficult because you'd start watching a tutorial and they'd cut half the blending out. So you think, how have they blended that already and mine still looks patchy? Um, or they'd say, right, that's that I done. Now we're going to, um, you know, I'll just go off camera and do the other one. You think, right, so now I've got to rewind what I've just watched and then do it in reverse for the other one. only time that I speed things up is if I'm doing a cut crease because where I talk you through the first bit it makes the film too long if I don't but that's pretty much the only time you'll get me speeding things up Looking forward to having a proper play with that violets. Um, palette. I like Juvia's. I need to film the second half of my um, makeup collection soon. I filmed the first half of the eyeshadow. Um, collection and declutter but I need to get on and film the other half now right I'm going into my bright lights palette and I'm going to use this Morphe Jeffrey uh, it's a JS24 but it's the the lip brush but it's great for getting down into that corner and I'm going to go in with a smash which is this glorious green just here Now obviously it's a matte, so I'm not going to spray it like I would do if it were <clears throat> a shimmer. So expect fallout. This is such a pretty eye look. I thought that these colours will blend together so nicely. Okay, yeah, that's hella fallout. Maybe I will wet it after all. I'm going to use my Slay All Day in Jasmine because, uh, and it's the only scent that does it to me. The jasmine one just tends to um, dry out my jawline. Nowhere else, just my jawline. Right, so never go in with a wet brush to press pigment. So I have now sprayed the, the pigment on the brush. And I'm just going to apply the pigment. Now obviously it goes on a little bit darker at first because it's a mat and you've wet it. That's fine, it'll soon dry back to its bright green again. Now I could have done a cut crease if I wanted to, but because it's a matte shade that I'm using, I didn't really want to do that. I'm just going to use the tip of the bristles just to blend where it meets the deeper purple just there. See how pretty that looks. I'm just going to dry this brush off and then reload it with some more of that green pigment because the problem I get with my left eye where I'm blinding it, it was pulled around an awful lot when I was a kid at the ophthalmic hospital. So I've got super super deep creasing on it. Just here, you can see it leaving with this tiger stripe effect. 
if I don't actually stretch the lid out to apply the um, the pigment onto the lid it ends up not being blended it sort of builds up in the creasing and then it dries through the day and ends up just cascading down my face and it just one you're then at risk of getting pigment in your eye and two you end up with it all down your makeup, all down your foundation, just looking a bit of a wreck. Now this lid does move more because it is looser because it was pulled around a lot but you could see when I was doing that bit I only pulled it out as far as I needed to and as soon as I'd done the area concerned I let go. I don't want to pull it around any more than I have to. The skin on your eyelids is as delicate as tissue paper. So I don't want to make those creases get deeper too quickly. So obviously the best way to do that is to not pull it around too much. So that's the plan. But unfortunately I do have to stretch it out which is really 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 annoying and I always get more fallout this side because I said the skin on this side is a lot looser but this is why I always do my foundation after I've done my eyes right I am going to pause you I'm going to pop some foundation on once I've finished cleaning this brush as best I can and uh, I'll be back to finish this eye look off. For you my darlings there will be no delay. I'll see you instantly. Hello. I bet you thought I was going to do kind of brows didn't you? Hmm? Hmm? You did didn't you? You did. Come on be honest I know you did. Yeah. Sorry to disappoint you and all that but of a change. Right, I'm going with this flat topped brush and I'm going into the um, Juvia's Violet. I'm going to shade 3 again, which is the deepest shade that we use. I'm just going to link it up with the outside there and just run that along. Lower lash line, like so. I always flinch more this side because obviously being blind in this side I don't have any peripheral vision. I'm relying very much on muscle memory and the viewfinder far too far away without my contact lens in for comfort to not poke myself in the eye regular viewers will know this is not always something that I was successful at regular viewers also know exactly which brush I'm reaching for this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. I love it because it's flat topped but it's chunky. So it's great for blending out. And I'm going to go into shade 6 again, which is this violet that I used up here. It's actually, it's more of a lavender than a violet. Violet has more blue in it. I'm just going to use this just to buff the lower lash line. Just to soften it out a little bit and tie top and bottom look together. I love it. 
I, uh, I wonder which lipstick Anya will have been using today. Because obviously, I know which three she's got. Well, she's got all six, but I know which three she's going to be using. And I know which one she's already used. But I'm not going to tell you, you're going to have to go and watch her films. Construction noise. Gotta love it, huh? Just gotta love it. Right. I'm gonna use my Ofra Nikki Tutorials Glazed Donut Highlighter. Patrick has very, very white eyes. This is the whitest highlighter that I have. So, I shall put a little bit of that just here and bring it along underneath and blend it in with the colour under my eye. I always do that. You don't have to. You can just leave it at the inner corner like that, but I just find that with my eye shape it looks much nicer. If I just continue the colour along and down, and then a little bit just up under the tail of the brow there. Lovely. Right. I'm going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to chuck some more highlight on my face, put some mascara on, add the lipstick, and I'll be back with my finished look. I am back. Okay, obviously I used same highlight. I used the L'Oreal um, Very Different Unlimited Mascara. It's one with the bendy wand at the top. Uh, and obviously, bikini bottom. So, this is my final look inspired by bikini bottom and Patrick Star. What do you think? If you'd had Bikini Bottom to do, how would you have done it? Would you have done a look based on the lipstick shade? Or would you have gone for the lipstick name like I did? Would you have done Spongebob rather than Patrick Star? Would you have done Squidward? Would you have done a Krabby Patty? Let me know in the comments below. I'd be really interested to know exactly how you would have interpreted your look based around a lipstick called Bikini Bottom. Now, if you're one of my uh, 4F family, please double check you're still subscribed. You are still getting deleted off when you don't want to be. Uh, once you've done that and done all those good YouTube things for me, you know, like, comment, share. I'm going to need you to go over to the lovely Anya's channel and do exactly the same things to her. And if you're not already subscribed to her, why not? She's lovely. Hit the subscribe button. You won't, you won't regret it, I promise you. Now while you've been watching me, I've been watching Anya. So I already know which lipstick she's used and what her look looks like. But you don't. So you have that enjoyment to come. So, refresh your drink. Get yourself a fresh snack. Sit back and watch Anya's film. However, if you come here from Anya's channel, then 
but you already know what her look looks like and now you know what mine looks like and if you've made it this far through the film I'm guessing you must have liked something about watching me witter away at you in which case it would be lovely if you too would like to join the 4F family by hitting that subscribe button and turning it from red to grey then you can ring my bell ring my bell and just hope YouTube sends you notifications when I put a new film up in case they don't I do have an awful lot of films that you can sit back and watch basically pick a playlist, put your feet up and indulge right my darlings as ever all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time bye for now